yeah, I'm with you. I, I don't see the friction specifically among teammates as an issue, right? We see it all the time. It's all part of pro sports. There's a lot of pressure to win. These guys are professional athletes. We've seen things get physical in Golden State with Draymond Green and Jordan Poole. They've been able to get past that. The infamous Michael Jordan uh, punching Steve Kerr. They won championships after that. It happens in sports. But the, the problem that I have is as the leader of the team, can you trust Julius Randle to deliver in a big spot? It's what I've always questioned about Julius Randle. It's never been about talent. It's been about when the pressure is mounting, and it's only going to get bigger as they head towards the playoffs now. As the pressure begins to mount, can he deliver? Can he channel his frustrations, the, the pressure of the defense, of not getting calls? Can he channel that onto the court? and perform and help his team win games. When he picked up the technical foul against Miami Heat, the Knicks were already down by 10, trying to come back. He picks up a technical foul. Uh, they hit the technical free throw. Now they're up. Now the Heat are up 11. That, that sets you back as a team. And a lot of people want to say that, well, in the Orlando game, he seemed to have finished the game fine. The team was still fighting, so on and so forth. But what happens in the playoffs? What happens when the spotlight becomes more intensified? I just don't trust Julius Randle to deliver in a big spot. And I've taken a lot of heat on that. A couple, a couple of months ago when I was on this show, Ian, and I said they should trade Randle. And a lot, of fans, a lot of fans got on me for that. But what they completely disregarded was I, had, I acknowledged that he's a great player. He's a talented player. It's never been about the talent with Julius Randle. It's been about can he deliver in a big spot. He's an Iron Man. He's a top performer, 57 points. I mean, look at the performance in that 57-point game. In that third quarter, he was so gassed because he put it all on the line. That's what you want from your player. But up here, when the pressure's mounting, I just don't know if he's going to be there to deliver. And it's been an issue that he's acknowledged. The organization has acknowledged it. I mean, Johnny for Johnny Bryant to go down to Dallas, and I'm sure there was basketball reasons to do that in the offseason. But for them to have that conversation about how Julius was acting last year and Johnny Brown presenting the question saying that, is that the teammate that you would want to play with? Yeah. And Julius having that self-awareness to say, no, the organization knows it's an issue. You see Mike Breen and Clyde talking about it. So it's it's an issue that that he needs to address so that he can help his team be better. Yeah. To me, though, it's, it's not just him. I think it's an organizational responsibility to get Julius to whatever you, however you see him best performing, it's an organizational responsibility to get him there, whether it's Johnny Bryant, William Wesley, Leon Rose. I mean, Tom Thibodeau is the head coach, but, you know, Johnny Bryant got a lot of credit for getting Julius to this place in, after visiting the offseason. So you'd think that Johnny could help him get back and channel things in the right way. And look, uh, I want to hear what Julito says. I have one more thing to say about Julito. You go first. Go ahead. No, I think you both are spot on, honestly. Um, for me, it's not even about the play on the court anymore. It's about the energy I believe he creates in the locker room and the message that he sends to the other guys on the team. You know, I think Julius has never been held accountable, not by this coaching staff, uh, not by the front office. And I, in my opinion, from uh, from the from our eyes, from the viewers' eyes, it doesn't seem he's been held held accountable. Julius has had more meltdowns in the last two seasons than, and for me, Julito, for anyone I've seen in the NBA since Dennis Rodman. But guess what? Dennis Rodman helped the Bulls get three rings, <laughs> and Julius got us one playoff win, right? And then you have guys like Reggie Bullock and Theo Pinson doing interviews joking about how everybody had to play defense or Tibbs would bench you except Julius, which I just think is, it's unacceptable. And, you know, for me last night, I think it was disrespectful to Emmanuel quickly, you know, and it was out of line, you know, especially when he has a history of this for two seasons, you know, quick has seemed to be the guy who's, who's jumped to the front line to stop Julius when he's having his meltdowns. Right. And for him to kind of buck up at Emmanuel quickly, when Emmanuel quickly is a 23-year-old kid, right? Julius Randle is supposed to be the vet of this team. He's one of the oldest guys on the team. For me, I think to see a 23-year-old calming down a guy who's almost 30, who's been in this league, who knows that these refs are going to miss some, some moments. They're, they're not going to get it right. And granted, the entire NBA currently is talking about how the refs are, miss, are, are messing up. Got it. But right now, eight games away from the playoffs, in the fa famous words of CP, we don't need it. 
We don't need it, especially when we are starting to create the chemistry and build the habits that are going to be necessary for this playoff run we, we're choosing to go on. And, you know, imagine how will he react when we're down five and the refs don't call a foul our way in the playoffs? You know, imagine yesterday was a game where we're still up 10 games. Uh, we're, till, we're still above 10 games and, you know, above 500. We're still on track to make the playoffs, whether it's, you know, the fifth seed and there's still chance for the fourth seed or playing. We're still on track. So imagine if that's how he reacted. I'm nervous to see how he reacts when it comes down to the playoffs. And I agree with you, CP. It's, he's not a, he's not reliable. And for me, he's he's you know, he's done a lot of. He's had a lot of great quotes where he's saying he he needs to check in on himself. He had to get better. He has a, a guy that seems as there to support his mental health each each day before the game. He's done. A, he's put a lot of. Pers- uh, he's had a lot of moments where he's put things in place to support his mental health. I need him to start having it show up when it matters. And for me, I, this is I'm a person who I've championed him all year. I've had people go at me saying, oh, you went at Julius last season and now this season you're champion. I'm the, I call what I see on the floor this season. He's been great for us all season long. It's, it's just the mental part that needs to get get right. And I, I, I'm, I'm nervous, man. It's alarming. And I hope he I hope he shifts it over for us to make this playoff run. I'll say two things. One, you mentioned Dennis Rodman, Julio. And they won. The Bulls won. So everybody, like his antics and whatever you want to say, they were accepted because they won. If the Knicks win a playoff series, Julius Randle's in the middle of it, plays well, you know, no one's going to care about uh, a night in Orlando where they lost and he lost his cool at the half. Um, But you have to win for that stuff to not matter. And the other thing is Randle, he's an emotional player. Like he's acknowledged that. He's talked about it. If you take that away from him, I think maybe he's a different player. So you don't want to take it away from him. I think you just want him to channel it in those moments so it doesn't hurt your team from a technical foul perspective, from getting him in foul trouble and all that. So I think that's where that's where it sits for me. Again, the competitive nature of pro sports, this stuff happens all the time. I don't want to blow it out of proportion, but there's a bigger context here to where um, it's worth discussing. 